Chapter XLIX The Absolute The substantial content of this work is for a more advanced humanity because the people of this barbarian epoch are not capable of understanding these things. Samuel on Baor. The Absolute is the being of all beings. The Absolute is that which is, which always has been and always will be. The Absolute is expressed as absolute abstract movement and repose. The Absolute is cause of spirit and of matter. But it is neither spirit nor matter. The Absolute is beyond the mind. The mind cannot understand it. Therefore, we have to intuitively understand its nature. The Absolute is beyond conditioned life. It is beyond that which is relative. It is the real being. It is non-being because it does not keep any concordance with our concepts. But the Absolute is the real being. This is why we do not intellectually comprehend it. Because for us, the Absolute is like non-being. Don't forget your trolley over there. Oh, uh... Um, I think as I was saying, uh, the Absolute is like non-being. Nonetheless, it is the real being of the being. Because to be is better than to exist. And the reason for the being to be is to be the being itself. Our legitimate existence is within the Absolute, which is a non-being, a non-existence to human reasoning. The Absolute is not God, or rather not a God, neither a divine nor human individual. It would be absurd to give form to that which has no form. It would be nonsense to try to anthropomor sorry, anthropomorphize space. Indeed, the Absolute is the unconditional and eternal abstract space. Um, far beyond gods and human beings. The Absolute is the uncreated light, which does not project a shadow in any place during the profound night of the great Pralaya. The Absolute is beyond time, number, measurement, and weight. Beyond causality, form, fire, light, and darkness. Nonetheless, the Absolute is the fire and the uncreated light. It is the potentiality, is what he's saying. Uncreated light, right? It's a potentiality. The Absolute has three aspects. The Ain is the same as the Sat in Sanskrit. In other words, the unmanifested Absolute. Ain Sof is the second aspect. It is where a certain manifestation already exists. It is the place where all creatures abide when the great pralaya, cosmic night, arrives because they do not have the right to enter into the aim, into the unmanifested absolute, which is beyond thought, word, atom, sound, beyond all of that which has form, number, weight, and so on. Ein Sof Or is the third aspect in accordance with the Hebrew Kabbalah. Here we find the first cosmos, the purely spiritual protocosmos. It is the solar absolute, which is formed by multiple spiritual suns. Practice. Meditate on the absolute and on the pralaya by placing the mind in quietude and in silence.